they, well, here, look, they do this. They cascade. It's what I said to you would happen. I said this after Tunisia and after Egypt fell. I said, here's part two. This is what's going to happen. They cascade. If I told you a year ago that Egypt, Tunisia, and Libya all would have massive uprisings and they would all flip, the dictators would be toppled. People who had been in power for decades would be toppled in a matter of days. What would you say the odds would be? The odds would be extremely low. Now, if I asked you, if I said Tunisia, Tunisia just fell, and this one and this one are going to fall too, what would the odds be? Well, the odds of these two happening would actually go up a little. They would, they would increase because this had fallen. So it had made things more unstable. Now, the odds of Tunisia and Egypt and then others, Syria, starting to be on fire, if I would have told you this, this, and this started to be unstable, and then this would have an uprising, what would the odds be? It would be higher again. You would, you'd be able to see that one. You'd say, yeah, that probably makes sense, even though most people in the media can't see it even yet. That makes sense. They cascade. The odds of these things cascade. The odds go up. All you have to do is believe that the free market doesn't work and the state should do it and that the world should be changed and the pendulum should be moving in that direction. And then you look at the events of the day and you coordinate some where you can, you cause others, you exploit, and then you just have, well, that would be anti-divine providence in my humble opinion. And all of a sudden, the world can change. You have to consider the factors when you're looking at the news. So, let's take a look at some of the things that are going around on the globe right now. And I didn't get a finished chance to, uh, it's been a busy day. Didn't get a chance to finish everything. But I want to go over these categories. Islamic unrest, union socialists and anarchists, the crisis, and the architects. Okay, let's start over on this board. Let me start with Egypt, where everyone was praising Egypt, all of them. Oh, they praised and celebrated the glorious revolution and democracy, including our president. When Egypt caught on fire, we urged caution. The president got out and said, no, 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 rise up, youth. It's great. We said, not so fast. We asked you to define democracy. Define it. It's the same question we asked in 2007. I asked you to define this in 2007. Could you tell me when the politicians were all talking about it? John McCain said change. Barack Obama said change. Did they mean the same thing? No. Change is a word that has to be defined. Progressives always do this. They put a word out there. Eh, make it sound nice. Handy capable. Hmm. I got news for you. Handy capable will mean handicapped by the time the next generation comes. It means the same thing. They just keep changing the words. Then they morph the definition. Well, change meant something different to Barack Obama than it did to John McCain. And it meant something a lot different to the people who are now experiencing this change that may have even voted for Obama. They're like, okay, I didn't know you meant that. When Obama spoke to the people in Berlin, he talked about change. It meant something when he spoke to the people in Cairo about change. But you now have Europeans not trusting Obama. In Afghanistan, they're burning him in effigy. In America, he spent us into oblivion. Is that the change you wanted? No. So now let's change change because this word doesn't mean anything anymore. Democracy. 
change to democracy. This doesn't mean anything. People are on to it. So you need a new word like change. What does democracy look like? This is what democracy looks like. Let me show you how the New York Times, how they're now defining it. How's it working out in post-Mubarak Egypt? When we come back, I'm going to show you what the New York Times is now, is now quoting the Egyptians is saying. And maybe somebody will wake up because the cascade has begun. Uh, tonight, I want to I want to ask you to DVR this show for the next two nights um, because we are covering something that is um, rather complex, and of course is going to be taken out of context. Um, but I want you to see it because y you, I will give you some of the things to watch for that will give you a, a reckoning of time and where we are. I don't know if all of these things will happen exactly the way they are but I, I tell you I read my research this morning early and it just lit up like a pinball machine things are starting to happen and there is something to say about the beginning of it I think in in April and May is an important month I want to go to the New York Times now and Egypt I want to this is really such an amazing statement the New York Times wrote, For many people, life today is even harder than before, especially for the poor and those who survive on tourism. No one is joking. There is no happiness, no work. The country is a mess. I want you to really look at this. People today, it's life is harder. Life is harder than before, especially for the poor. That is critical that you understand. Because the case is going to be made here that your life is tough, that these they have problems. But remember that. The people in Egypt are now saying life today is harder than before, especially for the poor. Remember that. And the country is a mess. The only ones excited are the radical Islamists. Now these are the people that want change. And they have a plan. They aren't even waiting for the political process that the press reported they wanted so badly. A couple of weeks ago, their buildings were being burnt, vehicles were destroyed, 13 people uh, died, 140 people injured in violent clashes between Muslims and Christians. They have, quote from the AP, attacked Christians and liquor stores trying to impose their austere version of Islamic law in provincial towns. The AP also reports that hardline Islamists have grabbed control of mosques, appointed their own imams and leaders, going around, listen to this Wisconsin, going around intimidating the public with signs urging women to wear hijabs. The hijab is obligatory, reads one sign, take your eyes off women. You will always see the telltale signs of um, fascists, no matter what their reason or whatever it is. It's important that you understand what happened in Egypt. It is the radicals who were enabled by the radicals surrounding our administration and others around the globe who are supported by the unions and enabled also by the press. And it all came down to this meaningless word, democracy. What does it mean? Well, it depends on who's in charge. We showed you last night the woman that is whispering in the ear who has this man whispering in hers, the wife of Cass Sunstein. She is whispering in the ear of Barack Obama. She is described in the nation as, this is an amazing quote, listen to this, as someone who understood war as an instrument to achieving her liberal, even radical values. Think of that. This is not, a, a, they're not tearing her apart for this. If somebody said that about Dick Cheney, it would be horrendous. She believes in war as an instrument 
to achieve her liberal, even radical values. Ponder that, America. She has the ear and celebrated for having the ear of the President of the United States. So you have Islamic and socialist revolutionaries. And for different reasons, they work together. Again, let me go back to this chart over here. These people don't necessarily want the same outcome. Michael Moore and Al Qadari, they don't want the same outcome. They don't even agree. They agree the system has to be overthrown and changed. That's it. That's it. Now, we showed you Egypt. We showed you what's happening here with the Ivory Coast, with Egypt, and all of this is on fire. But now, I want to show you when we come back, France. Because there is something very important that I told you, I think it was last fall, when we were talking about Greece, I said, don't worry. Don't worry about Greece. When you see this happen, that is the time to start to be real concerned. I saw that this morning at about 6.45 in my briefing. And that's what caused this two shows back to back because you need to see the pieces are starting to fall into place. I'll show you that piece of the puzzle next.